If you want to export rigged characters from Blender to any game engine, I think this may be the most important video that you can watch. If you've tried to export animations to Unreal, Unity or whatever and you found it frustrating, if you are not getting consistent predictable results, you're probably making one of the fundamental mistakes that I'm going to outline here. I actually expect this video to solve 99% of beginner issues in this area. Okay, let's make that 80% just to be on the safe side and we can carry on. Exporting your Blender rig to your favorite game engine is not difficult, but there are a few principles that you need to understand properly. And it almost doesn't matter which game engine we are talking about, whether it's Unreal, Unity, Godot, Source, Filmmaker, the same principles apply. Also, it doesn't matter what kind of rig you're using inside Blender. Well, it kind of does, but any rig can be adapted to work well with a game engine. Keep in mind that this is not a complete beginner tutorial. I assume that you know how to do at least basic rigging in Blender or that you can work well with Rigify. You should understand the difference between deforming and not deforming bones. You can learn those basics from my crash course in Blender Armatures video. And you can also learn about Rigify uh, from my Rigify series. Uh, links to those will be in the description. I don't want to make this intro too long, but I want to let you know that this is going to be a series of videos in which we'll be exploring different workflows, different problems, different add-ons and tools. So, if you have an issue with exporting your characters to a game engine, share them with us. Uh, you can do so in the YouTube comments uh, below or in our Discord group. Again, link to that will be in the description and we may be able to help you solve your problem right away and then I could include that specific problem in the series so that we can help more people. Alright, the most fundamental problem when it comes to exporting a rigged character to a game engine can be summarized in one sentence. What you see in Blender is not necessarily what you'll see in the engine. If you've heard of the abbreviation WYSIWYG, then this process is not WYSIWYG, not by a long shot. And that's not just a problem with Blender. Blender is a 3D authoring tool like Maya, Max, Modo, and so on. And Unreal, Unity, etc. are 3D game engines. The goal of a 3D authoring tool is to allow the artists as much freedom as possible even at the expense of system resources. The goal of a 3D game engine, on the other hand, is to run as smoothly as possible, even if that means limiting some artistic freedom. So it's almost like your 3D tool and your game engine speak a similar but still distinct language and things can get lost in translation. So it's up to us, the artists, to make sure that these two can communicate smoothly. Since the 3D tool allows more freedom, that usually means that we have to simplify and limit certain things inside Blender, so that the more limited game engine doesn't get confused. But ideally, we should create systems that will allow a lot of freedom in Blender and then automatically simplify things for us when we export the rig outside of Blender. Okay, enough theory. From here on, I'll show actual examples of techniques that are perfectly fine inside Blender, but they don't translate well to a game engine. I will start with simple things that may confuse beginners, and then I'll show problems that even experienced users may find difficult to deal with. So, problem number one, your fancy controls and constraints and drivers won't be exported. I'm going to make this Blender scene that I'm working with available for free. Feel free to download it if you want to follow along. In Blender, you can set up different controls through drivers and constraints. You can set up anything from, you know, IK controls, even some squash and stretch. Here I have set up an automated bicep. You can see that when I rotate the forearm, the bicep flexes automatically. And that is a little bit exaggerated, but I wanted it to be easily visible. And by the way, here I'm using a rig generated with Rigify, but that doesn't matter. A Rigify rig is just a fairly complex rig, but there is nothing magical about it. So even if you're using your own rig, then uh, the same principles will apply. 
Okay, the point I'm trying to make here is that all of these controls that I just showed you will be lost in the game engine. At the base of any rig inside Blender, there are the deformation bones. In Rigify, they are always placed on, in layer 29 over here. In a custom rig, they can be anywhere, but as a general rule, try to keep all deformation bones in one place so that they are easily accessible and you can easily work with them. These are the bones that actually move your mesh and the reason they are important is very simple. It is because the only thing that can be reliably exported to a game engine are those deformation bones and baked actions for them. A skeleton in a game engine is very similar to a straight forward schematic bone chain inside Blender. So if you can just build an FK rig in Blender and work with it, then your game engine will be very happy. The problem with that is that uh, a straight FK rig is very difficult to animate with. So we need nicer controls inside Blender. But anyway, here I have prepared one action for this arm. And here is the same action exported in Unreal. I'm going to handle the actual import and export settings in a separate video because they will differ slightly from engine to engine. I want to keep this video focused on principles that apply to all engines. As you can see, the flexing of the bicep seemed to work and that is because this flexing was exported as a baked action. However, if I look at the, the skeleton, you'll notice uh, that all of the IK controls and so on are gone and also if I rotate this arm the same way then no flexing will occur automatically. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the important differences between a blender rig, a blender skeleton and a game engine skeleton. Even though I'm showing this in Unreal it's going to be pretty much the same in any game engine. Now there may be tools inside your game engine that will allow you to achieve similar automation. So here in Unreal, I may be able to set up an automation again that will automatically flex this bicep. But that is a completely unrelated topic that we may talk about in future videos. My point is that all of the controls and automations won't be exported directly. Okay, problem number two. Corrective shape keys may not be exported, at least not directly. Another workflow to create advanced deformations in in Blender is to use driven shape keys. So here in my next collection I have a similar animation. If I play it you'll see that again the bicep flexes but if I look at the deformation bones you'll see that there is no deformation bone for the bicep. So here things are done differently. If I select the mesh you'll see that there is a shape key and that shape key is automatically triggered when I rotate the forearm. When I was preparing this part of the video, I actually expected this to not work at all with a game engine, but I was wrong, I was kind of wrong. If we look at the result in inside Unreal, you'll see that the flexing of the muscle still occurs, and that kind of surprised me. Okay, the flexing of the muscle is here against my expectations, but again, it is actually baked inside this animation. If I switch to a skeleton and try to rotate this arm, then again, you know, it, it won't uh, happen automat automatically. And ignore these additional bones here, I must have made uh, a mistake when exporting this model. Okay, moving on. Problem number three, everything has to be weighted properly. Okay, in the next collection I have three copies of this same uh, arm model and they're kind of holding a prop but if I play the animation you'll see that they're not really holding it yet. The prop hasn't been attached yet. In Blender there are many ways to make this prop follow the arm. I can parent it directly to a bone, I can use a child of constraint, I can probably use some other uh, combination of crazy uh, constraints like copy transforms copy location and rotation and so on. However, to export this prop properly and reliably to a game engine, it has to be parented to the armature and it has to have proper weights applied to it. All other workflows will not uh, give you good results. So here I'm going to demonstrate each of the workflows that I just mentioned. 
So this prop, this pistol, will be parented directly to a bone in this uh, rig. So I'm going to select the prop, shift select the armature, go to pose mode, and I'm going to want to parent this prop directly to the deformation bone of the hand. So I'm going to unhide deformation bones, select the hand bone, which is this bone here, press Ctrl P and choose bone. And that parents this object directly to the bone. In the next example, in the red arm, I'm going to use child of constraint. So I'm going to go to the constraint tab for the objects choose child of. For the target I'm going to pick the rig and in here I'm going to start typing hand and I'm going to choose dafhand.l and the gun is going to jump to a random location. I just uh, have to press set inverse and it will jump back and by the way if you're using one of the experimental versions of Blender or if you're watching this video in the future you may not need to press this set inverse button because this weird jumping of the object is going to be fixed soon. But anyway, if I now play this animation, you'll see that the first two guns are following the hand in Blender. Okay, for the last uh, prop, I'm going to do it the proper way. The proper way when it comes to exporting to game engines and that is parenting directly to the armature and then setting proper weights. So I'm going to select the prop then shift select the armature, press Ctrl P and choose empty groups. Then I'm going to select the gun, go to object data properties and under vertex groups, actually I should go to edit mode. Then under vertex groups, I'm going to look for hand and select the, the hand vertex group and click assign. If you're not familiar with vertex groups and vertex weights for characters in particular, I have a couple of videos on the topic. You'll be able to find a link in the description of the video. Okay, I, I'll go to object mode, play the animation, and now all of the guns are following the, the hand inside Blender. Here are the results inside Unreal. As you can see, the blue hand, which had the pistol, parented directly to the bone is not animated and I couldn't figure out why that is. I guess this type of parenting messed something up, but yeah, it's not working at all. Here we have the other one which, which had child of constraint and the animation is there, but the gun is missing. And here we have the proper workflow with weight painting and everything is exactly as it should be. So when it comes to skeletal meshes, every vertex has to be weighted to at least one deformation bone and that will give you predictable results between the two softwares. Okay, problem number four. Most modifiers won't be exported. Blender has a nice set of modifiers which can help you achieve cool effects inside Blender. But if your goal is to export to a game engine, you should forget about most of these modifiers here. For example, here I have already added a wave modifier to this uh, green hand. If I enable it and then play the animation, you'll see that we get this wavy effect all over the, the hand. But this modifier is calculated frame by frame inside Blender, so it will not transfer to Unreal, etc. There are many more practical uses of uh, modifiers, some people use lattices to create advanced deformations, but that won't work in engine. If you set up some of these physics simulations, like cloth or soft body, that won't uh, make it into the engine. The smooth corrective uh, modifier deserve a special men mention. This modifier is almost magical. In many cases, you can just slap it on a rigged model and the deformations will just instantly look better. But again, this is an effect that is calculated in real time inside Blender. When you export outside of Blender, it will be ignored. So yeah, modifiers in game engines, uh, not a good idea. Now, obviously, I'm going to get rid of the uh, wave modifier, but obviously Blender attaches the mesh to the bones through this armature modifier. So that is an exception you definitely want to keep the armature modifier. There are a few other modifiers that may be quote-unquote exportable, 
like for example the, the triangulate modifier that will just make your mesh uh, triangulated when you export it. If you have a subdivision surface on, that will export your uh, mesh with the subdivision surface applied. So that may work. But you cannot export the ability to decrease and increase the subdivision level of your mesh. That is just a Blender function. But anyway, even these uh, modifiers that may be exportable, I would consider them an advanced workflow. So until you get comfortable with the process of exporting to game engines, I recommend keeping things simple and only having an armature modifier on your model. Problem number five, bendy bones won't be exported. Blender has an amazing feature called bendy bones. It can be a huge time saver, but it is one of those functions that only work inside Blender. Other software won't recognize it at all. Just accept that you have to get rid of any bendy bones when working with game engines. Here I have a mesh with bendy bones. I'm going to turn on in front. And to make sure that you can see the bendy bones, you should change the display type to B bone. Then if you go to pose mode and select any bone and give it more segments in the bone tab, bendy bones area. Then this additional curvature will be automatically calculated for you. And that's nice inside Blender, just keep in mind that this won't be exported. Here is how this bending animation looks on this cylinder with bendy bones. It's very, very smooth. And in this state, I'm going to export that to, to Unreal. And here is the result. It's not smooth at all. If I remove the bendy bones, then I'll see the exact same result as I saw in Unreal. So what happened is that when I exported this um, rigged mesh, the exporter, in this case the FBX exporter, completely ignored the bendy bones feature. Okay, if you have a character with bendy bones, like this, one easy way to fix it is to simply select all bones in the, in the armature and have one bone active. Then you would go to segments and make that one. And then simply right click and choose copy to select it. And that will copy this uh, number of segments, which is one, to all other bones. And that effectively removes the bendy bones from your entire character. If you work with Rigify, you can do the same thing. You can just go to your rig pose mode, go to the deforming bones. I can switch to B bones and uh, I'll see which bones are uh, bendy bones. Then I can select everything, go to bendy bones, make one of the segments one and then right click and choose copy to select it. And that's cool. The problem is that if I regenerate my rig from the meta rig, then these bendy bones will be back. So for some rig types, like the arm, for example, you can set the bendy bones inside the rig type options. And for example, here for the arm, they're set to 10. I can simply set that to one. And that is go going to set the bendy bones to one uh, when I generate the rig. Same thing for the leg. And the only exception to this is the spine. It doesn't have any bendy bone options, but it does generate uh, bendy bones. So we have to remove them manually every time. Keep that in mind. So I think this is a good list of stuff that will be lost in translation between Blender and a game engine. There may be other things that I couldn't think of right now, but I think you should understand now that what you see in Blender is not necessarily what you'll get in Engine. Wheezy B isn't Wiggy. It may be simpler to tell you what you can do rather than all of the things that you cannot do. Here is what will definitely work. If you stick to only one armature, one rig, and you parent all of the character's meshes to it, and you do proper weight painting, then you'll be just fine. As you can see in this example, I can have more than one separate mesh that are all um, parented to the same armature. That will be okay. But if you're new to this stuff, then maybe you should even just stick to one mesh. So one mesh, one armature modifier, and proper weight painting. That will definitely work. Okay, now we finally get into the advanced problems. And the first of the advanced problems 
is the issue of bone hierarchy. The problem with hierarchy actually kind of follows from the first of the basic problems that I mentioned. Complex stuff like drivers and constraints won't carry over to the game engine. Constraints in particular often create the illusion of a parent-child relationship, but in reality they break the hierarchy of the rig. Again, this is usually not a problem in Blender, but it could become a problem when you export to Unreal or Unity. Here is a simple example. Here I have a simple leg armature and all bones are connected in a hierarchy like this. Pelvis, thigh, shin, foot and toe. You can see this hierarchy clearly over here. Actually I forgot to parent the, the thigh to the pelvis. This is a nice and simple hierarchy and a game engine would love that. Now I'm going to quickly set this leg to be controlled by IK. This is exactly the same thing that I did in my crash course to blend the armatures video. If you want to watch this process in more detail, you can watch that video. But basically I'm going to set up the IK. And now when I move the IK target, the leg will be influenced by it. When I move the pelvis, I get the sinking of the foot. So to fix that, I could unparent the foot bone and then constraint it instead to the shin bone with copy location. And now everything moves nicely. And when I move the pelvis, I don't get this sinking of the leg. So everything appears okay. But if we check the hierarchy, we'll find out that it has been changed. The pelvis, thigh and shin are parented together, but the foot and toe are now in a separate hierarchy. And this disconnected hierarchy is exactly what you'll get if you export this rig to Unity now, or to Unreal or whatever. I just want to quickly let you know that in some cases you can totally work with messed up uh, hierarchies. Basic animations may actually work perfectly well, but very often you do need good hierarchy, so it pays off to know about this. And also understanding this will help with understanding the next important issue. So we need a workaround which preserves the good hierarchy of the deformation bones, but also allows us to set up any crazy constraints that we want. And there is such a workflow and I cannot get any credit for it. It comes directly from Pierrick, from P2 Design, and his course, The Art of Effective Rigging. This course is just awesome. I highly recommend it if you want to get your rigging to the next level. I'll put a link to the course below. It's an affiliate link, but it won't cost you more. In fact, Pierrick was nice enough to create a discount code just for CG Dive viewers. So if you enter code CGDIVE at checkout, you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Pyrrhic. Okay, so the solution is what Pyrrhic calls the TGT bone chain, and it is a very elegant solution. TGT stands for target. The TGT bones are an exact copy of your deformation bones. So here I'm going to undo the IK setup. Then I'm going to select all bones, because in this case everything is a deformation bone. Select all, shift D, duplicate, constrain the movement on the uh, Y axis for example, and move the bones exactly one unit on the Y axis and press enter. Now I'm going to rename these bones. For each I'm going to remove the dot .001 uh, suffix and I'm going to change the prefix from DEF to TGT. Also, I'm going to select all of these bones, go to the bone tab and alt click on, on the deform option. And that will make all of these bones non-deforming bones. Next, I'm going to go to pose mode and I'm going to constrain each DEF bone to the corresponding TGT bone. So first I'm going to select the TGT toe bone and then the DEF toe bone 
and press Control shift c and I want to choose Copy Transforms. And I leave these options to World Space to World Space. I think Pyrrhic uses Local Space to Local Space, which I'll have to check, but I think either will work. So I'm going to keep constraining all of the bones. When I constrain the last one, the whole chain jumped to the position of the TGT bones. That is because of the constraints. That is okay, I'm going to keep constraining. Okay, now I'm going to go to edit mode and here the bones will be in their unconstrained positions. I'm going to select all of the TGT bones, press G, Y to move on the Y axis and move minus one unit on the Y axis and press enter. And with these TGT bones selected, I'm going to move them on layer two. And basically what you do from here is that you work on the TGT bones and you leave the deformation bones alone. So I'm going to switch to la layer two where I have the TGT bones and I'm going to create the same IK setup. And the setup is working. Now I'm going to move the IK target to the next layer. And now I'm just going to unhide the deformation layers and the IK. And if I move it, you see that it's perfectly moving the deformation bones. That is the basic technique. And that allows you to have any hierarchy that you wish in your deformation bones. So for example, I can go to edit mode and simply select all of, all of my deformation bones, press Alt P and choose clear parent. And that will make all of these bones disconnected. Even in that state, if I now move the IK target, the deformation bones behave as before. And that is extremely powerful and you'll see how this uh, disconnecting all bones is actually very useful when we start talking about the next important issue. The basic workflow if you're building a rig from scratch would be first create the deformation bones with the hierarchy that you like, then duplicate the deformation bones and rename them with the TGT prefix. Constrain the deformation bones to the TGT bones using copy transforms. From there, you can go nuts and create any controls and automations that you like on top of the TGT chain. And do not touch the deformation bones unless you decide to change the hierarchy, for example. The cool thing is that you can add a TGT chain to an existing rig. So if you already have a rigged character that you want to export to a game engine, you can add a TGT chain to it. And the workflow is not so different than uh, when working from scratch, but it can be a little bit more complicated. But again, you need to duplicate all deformation bones, rename them to TGT if you want to comply with this convention, and set up the copy transforms so that the deformation bones follow the target bones, the TGT bones. There may be a few additional steps and the whole process can get a little bit messy with the bone names, for example. I'm working on a workflow that will make this process simpler. I actually want to make it into a script that will make the, this process almost automatic. And actually there are tools already that do this kind of uh, stuff automatically. I'll show one of them at the end of the videos and possibly other ones in future videos. So stay tuned. But for now I'll show you a manual way. Here again, I'll be demonstrating on a Rigify rig, but I tested this technique with all sorts of rigs and it did work consistently. I highly recommend that you place all deformation bones on one single layer. If you also name all deformation bones with the prefix DEF, then you can follow this process exactly as I demonstrated here. So here's the workflow. By the way, notice that this Armature already has some uh, animations in the NLA. Working with NLA is something that I'll cover in future videos. But our goal here is to add the TGT bones without messing these actions here in the NLA. So let's do it. I'll actually go to object mode and select the armature and the character, duplicate them with Shift D and move them to another layer. I have already prepared my collections. Uh, in this case, I'll choose the TGT underscore rig collection and then hide this default rig and 
I'll move to the TGT rig collection. The reason I'm doing this is because at the end, I want to compare the default rig and the TGT rig, uh, and uh, we can see what kind of differences that creates. To make this uh, character distinguishable, I'm going to change its color. So let's go to material, make a new color and call it green, for example, change the color and then also copy this color and paste it into the viewport display color. And I'm going also going to rename this rig to something like TGT rig. Okay, here is the process. First, I'll visualize the deformation layers, which in this case are on layer 29. And let's stick in front so that we can see the bones. Then I'll go to edit mode, but before that, I'll go to object mode and um, and I want to disable all of these actions that I currently have. Then I'll visualize my controls, go to pose mode and select everything and clear all transforms. To complete this process, I'll need to parent and constrain bones to one another. And when I do, some bones may jump around in space. Uh, so placing the character in the default position will reduce this uh, jumping around. But anyway, now I'm going to go to layer 29, edit mode, select all bones, shift D, duplicate them and move them to layer 27 because it's free. So these bones, the original ones, will stay deformation bones and they'll have the, the DEF prefix. And the ones that I move to layer 27 will become the TGT bones. So while I'm here, I'm going to do the next step, which is fixing the hierarchy of these bones. So to do so, I want to go to pose mode and these bones have constraints on them, which I don't want. The TGT bones will have the complex uh, constraints that actually create the functionality of the rig and the DEF bones will simply be constrained with copy transforms. So I need to remove all of these constraints. To do so, I'll select all bones in pose mode, go to pose constraints, clear pose constraints. Now I want to reparent these bones so that the hierarchy uh, becomes, becomes suitable for games. To test the hierarchy, I want to rotate and move my bones, but right now I cannot do th that. That is because by default, Rigifile locks these transforms. What I can do is select one bone to make it active, then press A to select all other bones. And then while holding Alt, unlock all of these locks uh, on rotation. And now I'll be able to rotate. And this is the state of my hierarchy right now. This is what uh, will be exported to game engine right now. And I need to fix that. So I'll turn on X-axis mirror. I need to parent the clavicle to the, this chest bone, the arm to the clavicle, the tail and legs are not connected, so I need to select all of these bones and the tail and then shift select the base of the spine and parent with keep offset. Here this jaw and uh, the, the ears are not uh, parented to the head, so I need to do that. And now things almost look okay, but uh, from experience I know that these palm bones are not connected with the fingers. So I need to parent the fingers to the palm bones. And that's it. Now my deformation bones are in a nice hierarchy. So next I can move to layer 27 and work on preparing the TGT bones. So now I move to layer 27. I'll go to pose mode, select all bones here, go to edit, batch your name, bones, find replace DEF and replace with TGT and click OK. Now here is a little problem um, with the naming of these bones. For example, the spine, the original uh, spine was called DEF spine.001. That was the first one. But because the top, uh, the head was actually called spine006, when I duplicated all of these bones, the first spine bone was called 007. 
and that's not ideal, but we can work that way. When I improve this technique, I'm going to make it so that the TGT and the DEF bones only differ in their prefix. And now something very important. I don't want these bones to be deforming bones, but because I copied them, I duplicated them from, from the DEF bones, they still have the deformation option on. So I want to remove it from all bones. With all bones selected, I'm just going to go to the bone tab and look for the deform checkbox. And one way to remove it from all bones is to simply hold Alt while clicking on this checkbox and that will clear the deformation option from all of these bones, which you can verify after that. So next, I want to constrain the deformation bones to the TGT bones. To do so, I'm going to offset these TGT bones again, one unit on the Y-axis, and I'm going to shift select the layer 29 so that I also see the, the deformation bones. And now if I go to pose mode, the TGT bones will jump in space. So I'm going to switch the skeleton to rest position. That will give me this offset of the TGT bones and then I can start constraining. The process is simple but time consuming. Again, you select one TGT bone, then shift select the corresponding DEF bone, press Control shift c and choose copy transforms. Then you select the next one and then corresponding DEF bone, Control shift c copy transforms. Actually, the next time you could select one TGT bone, shift select the DEF bone and press shift r, which is repeat action, and that will repeat the adding of copy transforms, and that will be a little bit faster. And that's it. Now I'm going to speed up the footage. And if you're following along, just make sure that you constrain all bones without exception. Okay, I'm done. One way to verify if all bones are constrained, all of the deformation bones, is to check if all of them are green. Green means that they do have a constraint on them. And my bones seem fine, so I'm going to go to edit mode, select all of the TGT bones, and press G, Y, and minus one on the numpad, and press enter. And that will bring them back in the, in the default position. Then I can go to pose mode, unhide my controls, and activate the action strips. And let's check the jump animation, for example. Right, I need to switch back to pose position. And the jump seems to be working. Run. For some reason, this arm is now in IK mode. I should switch it back to FK and it's going to be fine. And yeah, my actions uh, seem to be fine. Okay, that's the whole process. It's a bit time consuming. And because of the many manual actions, there is a chance of human error and that's not good. So I will try to make this process automatic the only thing that uh, I probably can't automate just because I'm not such a great scripter is fixing the hierarchy of the DEF bones. So that will have to be done uh, manually. But I think that's quite fair. And as I said, if you want a fully automated tool, I will introduce one later in the video and then maybe even more in future videos. But let's first talk about the next issue, which is the bone scale issue or the squash and stretch issue. 
this is probably the most difficult problem that you'll face if you want uh, your characters to squash and stretch. The good news is that many characters don't need this, so you could simply avoid stretching your character inside Blender and you'll have no problem in the game engine. Problem solved. If you're using a custom rig, then simply do not create stretchy controls. And if you use Rigify, for example, then you can avoid pulling the limbs past their natural length, so don't overextend them. You can also turn stretching off for the limbs. So if I select uh, the IK handle, there's this IK stretch option. If I set it to zero, then the rig will never stretch. Same thing with the leg. Uh, the exception again is the spine. It is stretchy by default. If I pull this spine handle, it will stretch. But if you stick to rotating these uh, controls for, for the chest and hips and you don't uh, move or scale them, then you won't be using the stretch options. So yeah, if you don't need to stretch your characters, then simply avoid this in Blender and you can forget about the stretch issue. But I think it's more interesting to try to understand this problem and maybe try to find some solutions for it. The problem is deeply technical and I won't pretend that I understand it on that uh, mathematical level. But the gist of it is, is that if you have bones in a parent-child relationship and they influence each other using scale, then this kind of action cannot be reliably baked. Baking won't work. And when you export a rig to a game engine, the actions of the deformation uh, bones are actually baked. So that becomes a problem. Here is a super simple example. I'll hide this TGT rig and unhide my stretch issue collection. And here I have a chain of three bones. And they are constrained to these uh, other bones using dumped track and stretch to constraint. And that is a very common workflow to make these kind of stretchy uh, bone chains. Also notice that these bones in edit mode, they're a chain of bones. They're parented to each other. And I have this, uh, you know, random motion. If I now go to pose, animation, bake action, and bake this uh, action with these settings, this will uh, simulate what happens when you export this armature. And here's the baked action. Notice how this uh, last bone goes completely crazy and the action has nothing to do with the original one. If I undo, here's the original one. Here is it again baked. I think this illustrates the squash and stretch issue. Just imagine this happening to your character and I think you'll be convinced that you need to solve this problem. So let's go to this next collection that I have, which is called stretch issue disconnected. Now here it's the exact same setup except that these bones are uh, separate. They are not only not connected to each other, but they are in no parent-child relationship to each other. Again, I'll go to pose mode. Uh, the action that I have is exactly the same one and I'll bake with the same options. And you'll see that the action doesn't go crazy. It's exactly the same as uh, before baking. So that's one solution for the squash and stretch problem. Uh, one of the simplest solution. Remove any parenting from the deformation bones and any stretching can be baked correctly. And thanks to the TGT chain, we can do that really easily. I'm going to hide this collection again and again unhide the TGT rig collection. And again, I'm going to select both the character and the, and the rig, shift D, duplicate them and move them to the next collection that I have, which is the TGT rig disconnect. Okay, hide the TGT rig collection and unhide the disconnected one. And again, I'm going to uh, create a new material for this guy. Uh, let's make it orange this time. And again, copy that in the viewport display settings as well. Cool. So now to create this armature that can be stretched in, in a game engine, 
all I need to do is select this rig. Let's rename it also. Disconnect it. And go to the armature. Unhide layer 29 with the DEF deformation bones. Go to edit mode. Select all bones. Press Alt P and choose clear parent. Then I can go to pose mode and play my actions. This is one action that I have that is meant to test the stretching of the rig. But yeah, you'll see that it works. And when we test uh, these things in the game engine, we'll see the difference. But yeah, my other actions also work, so that's nice. Now, obviously though, the trade-off with this approach is that we completely destroy the hierarchy of this rig. But as I said a little bit earlier, there are cases where the uh, hierarchy is not that important. So you will have to decide for yourself which approach to take. And of course, you may be wondering if there is another approach, an approach that combines the best of all uh, techniques so that you can have good hierarchy, but also uh, squash and stretch. And the answer is yes, but I'm not ready to uh, demonstrate it yet. I still need to figure some things out, but it's definitely possible. I'll definitely show how to do that in this series. But for now, I'm going to show you an automated approach. An approach that uses an add-on called A-Rigify. The A in A-Rigify has the same meaning as, uh, for example, asymmetry. So this add-on is meant to undo a lot of the things that Rigify does uh, that are not suitable for game engines. Okay, to demonstrate this add-on, I'm going to unhide my default rig and make another copy of it. And I'm going to move it to my A-Rigify collection and uh, unhide it. Let's give this guy another color. Let's say purple here. Now, A-Rigify is a paid add-on. It costs uh, $30 as, as I'm recording this. But if you're serious about exporting to game engines, I think it is more than worth it. The add-on is very, very close to just one click solution to all of your problems. It solves the hierarchy issue automatically without any input from the user, just with one click. And it also solves the squash and stretch problem. Here is how it works. Uh, keep in mind that I still want to test uh, this add-on more thoroughly and find out the best techniques, the best approaches for exporting to each engine. And when I do, I'm going to make a separate video or videos uh, for it. But for now, here is the, is the basic workflow. First, I'm going to delete all of these actions in an NLA, go to pose mode and clear transforms. I found out that the add-on works best when your character is, is in the neutral pose. Then I'll go to the armature tab and I'll find the A-Rigify area. This area uh, is available because I have installed the add-on. When you purchase it, you just install it like any other add-on. You just go to preferences, add-ons, install, find your add-ons and uh, install it and then you activate it. But then uh, you just need to set some actions. Generally, you don't want any leaf bones. The other options you can leave to default. And then I select the actions that I want to bake. So idle, jump, run, walk, and the stretch test action. And then I just uh, click a rigify armature and actions. Then wait a while. On my machine, it takes um, 30 seconds or so even less. And there you go. Uh, the new armature was placed in the main collection because I didn't have the a collection highlighted. Uh, now I'll move it over here. The original rig is preserved just for uh, future reference and use, but you can hide it now. All actions are now in this new rig that was uh, automatically generated. If I enable in front, you'll see that it only consists of deforming bones. Here I can try test the, the walk and it works. Um, the run, also, no problem. Jump, idle, no problem. What's very interesting, I'll now activate the stretch test um, animation. 
here is and notice how these uh, bones do not really stretch but they disconnect and that creates the stretching if i go to pose mode and rotate one of the bones you'll see that the hierarchy is perfect but yeah you have to keep in mind that this stretch that you achieve using this uh, disconnection of the bones will be slightly different than uh, using the actual stretch but it, it is very very close so there is a little bit of trade-off uh, here as well and so the manual approach that i'll show you in future videos will basically be this um, although i cannot be sure because i don't know exactly what this add-on does behind the scenes but it's going to be something very similar to this and so if you have more modest needs, then you can wait for my solution. And if you're more, more serious about working with uh, game engines, then maybe, you know, buying this add-on would be a, a really good solution for you. Because as you can see, it basically solves all problems and it just works with one click. It's really amazing. I'm in contact with the developer of this tool. Uh, he's very responsive. Currently, this uh, add-on only works for Rigify, but uh, I'm discussing with him the possibility of extending the tool so that it can work on any rig. That would be very interesting to see. You can get this add-on from a link that I'll put in the description. And uh, again, I was able to negotiate a discount for uh, CG Dive viewers. If you enter coupon code CG Dive at uh, checkout, you'll get 5% off. Thank you, Laszlo. Okay. Next, I'm going to export all of these rigs, the default one, the TGT one, the TGT disconnected one, and the A-Rigify one, and we'll see how they perform in a game engine and what the differences between all of them are. Again, I'm going to have a separate video just for just about exporting uh, FBX from Blender uh, for game engines, but I don't want to leave you hanging here, so here's the main approach. Select both your character and the armature that you want to export. Go to Export, FBX. Make sure you tick Selected Objects Only. The transform settings are generally fine. The geometry options may be useful to export your smoothing groups uh, exact correctly. Uh, I'll cover this in a video focused on export. In Armature, you want to untick Add Leaf Bones and, and check only the forming bones. Under Bake Animation, you want to uncheck all actions and the other options you can leave to default. You may need to uh, tweak some of these uh, settings for specific results, but these are good defaults. If you're exporting for Unreal, you basically need to export two FBX files, just the rigged mesh and uh, then the, the animations. So when you export the mesh, you will completely untick Bake Animation and export you know, a mesh like this. And then you'll do another FBX export, tick the uh, bake animation option and export animations. That's a super quick uh, overview. I hope you give, it gives you uh, some pointers and I'll definitely do a video that covers the exact settings uh, that are best for uh, Unreal, Unity and maybe Godot and other engines. Okay, I exported all of the four rigs to the game engine and let's see what we have. This is the default rig. So this is default rigify, but you'll get similar results with any rig that you haven't properly prepared for game engine export. So the good news is the animations work quite well. Here's the idle animation, run, walk, jump, all looking fine. I mean, I didn't spend much time on these animations, but they look exactly as they look in Blender, which is great. But let's look at the stretch. Oh my god. Here you can very clearly see the problem with squash and stretch. Okay, let's see the next trick, which is the one where we set up TGT bones with a nice hierarchy. Again, the uh, animations are looking fine and the squash and stretch is looking really funny. Uh, I'm not sure why this happened. I think I made some sort of mistake when I was exporting, but yeah, obviously it's not working. So it may seem that the TGT gave the exact same results as the default rig, but that's not the case. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. Next, let's look at the TGT bones where all uh, deforming bones are disconnected. Again, animations are fine. And the squash and stretch, finally, we're getting good results in this area. 
the squash and stretch works. And finally, let's check out a rigify animations looking good. And the squash and stretch also works. So as I expected, a rigify is giving really nice results. But anyway, let's check out the differences in the hierarchy and uh, what that means. If I look at the skeleton of the default uh, Rigify rig, if you pay attention to the hierarchy here, you'll notice that there are many MCH and ORG and all sorts of bones uh, other than the DEF bones. Even though when I was exporting, I clicked the Deformation Bones Only option. And I'm not absolutely sure why that is. I think because of the messy uh, hierarchy, the exporter needs to export these additional bones so that the whole hierarchy connects. But anyway, uh, you have a lot of uh, unnecessary bones and this is not good for optimization. And another area where you can see it very clearly is if you test physics, which uh, Unreal lets you test very easily. I'll just drag this physics mesh into the scene and it will become a ragdoll right away and it will be completely skewed. Yeah, very, very bad. Now let's look at the TGT rig where we fixed the hierarchy. If I look at the skeleton, if I re look really closely, there's still some ORG bones uh, here and there, which I'm not quite sure why. I'll have to have a good look at this, but still th this hierarchy is much, much better than what we had before. If I test the physics now, much better. Okay, this can work. If I now take a look at the TGT uh, rig with the disconnected bones, you'll see that only def deformation bones are there. However, they're in no hierarchy at all. Let's test uh, the physics just for fun. And uh, yeah, this is really weird. All right, let's go to the Arigify results. As can be expected, the results are very, very clean. Um, a rigify also uh, removes the DEF prefixes, which can be useful. And if we test the physics, they work quite well. So to quickly recap the results, the default armature resulted in OK animations. You can import the animations and they work, but the bones are in a bad hierarchy and they're not optimized. There are a lot of um, unnecessary bones. Squash and stretch won't work and physics will be messed up. Next, by adding a TGT chain to our rig, we optimized the hierarchy, which will give us be better performance. And also this, this rig can be used for physics and other situations where the hierarchy is important. But this approach will not work if you want squash and stretch. Then by using the same uh, TGT approach, but then disconnecting all deformation bones, we again kept a fairly optimized bone structure that also allows for squash and stretch. But this approach uh, is not suitable when hierarchy is of importance and physics uh, will not work. And finally, we, uh, we get to a rigify, which gave the best results. Using this add-on, you can easily solve all of the main problems when it comes to exporting rigs to a game engine. So again, if you're interested, you can buy a Rigify from a link below and you can insert a CG dive at checkout to get 5% off. And I think that will serve you well if you're very serious about using Blender for games. If you're more of a beginner, you can wait for my manual solution to this problem. I want to show you the same skeletal meshes that we just saw in Unreal in Unity as well, because the whole idea of this video is that this workflow works for any engine. And the results that you see here are from the exact same FBX files that I used for Unreal, I just imported in Unity. And it's really nice to see that things just work. 
this animation is imported correctly. The one with um, a shape key, a morph target, also works. Here things are a little bit different when it comes to attaching the props to a character. Here again this arm is not animated, but at least we can see the prop. In the next one the prop is actually moving, which surprised me, but actually it is not correctly attached to any bone. And in this one where we used proper weight painting, things are working well. Here's the test for the bendy bones, again they don't work, of, of course. And these are the characters that we exported. Uh, here I'm just trying to show you that the animations tend to work no matter uh, what the hierarchy is. And here's the stretch test, you will see that it is very very uh, similar to what we saw in Unreal. So I think that will convince you that the problem is not in the individual engine, but very often it is just about exporting correctly. So again, uh, only if we disconnect the deformation bones or if we use a technique similar to a rigify, then we get proper stretching. And uh, this video is already too long, so I'm not going to show you the bone hierarchies, but trust me, it is exactly the same thing that we saw in Unreal. There is no significant difference. Okay, I think we are ready to wrap things up for this first part of this series. Again, let me remind you that this is going to be a series of videos. If you have any problems exporting to game engines, let me know and I'll try to consider them for future videos. I want to quickly let you know what you can expect from the next uh, couple of videos. Most likely the next thing that I'm going to cover is the export settings for each engine because that is another important piece of the puzzle. If you get your rig right in Blender and have the correct export options and export settings and export add-ons in some cases, then things should go really, really smoothly. So I already mentioned that, but the engines that I intend to cover for now are Unreal, Unity and Godot, and maybe others if people suggest it. Some tools that I want to cover definitely are a Rigify, one more time, in more detail. There is UEFI, which is a popular script for exporting and, uh, you know, working with Unreal. It has some features similar to A Rigify that I want to check out. There are the Blender tools from Epic Games. And there are many, many other scripts that I have in my bookmarks that I need to explore. And if I consider them worth your time and my time, then I'm going to make a video about them. That's it. I did spend a lot of time working on this video and um, and trying to demonstrate all of the problems with uh, as much clarity as I could. I hope I was successful. I always ask you to like and subscribe. In this case, I would like to go a step further and ask you to share this video because this will be a new series. Uh, I'll be doing this for a while, so I really hope as many people as possible will see it. Happy winter holidays and see you in 2021.